For centuries, roboticists have been building robots that resemble us and interact in human-like ways. Hi there. In recent times, we've seen great progress. Robots are becoming more like humans in their appearance and ability to perceive and express emotions and have intimate conversations with us. But how will this affect human relationships? And can humans really learn to coexist with robots? One day in the future, you might walk alongside humanoid robots, indistinguishable from human beings. At Osaka University, Professor Ishiguru has developed a real person-based android called Geminoid. It's designed to appear and behave just like the person it was based on. He's built his android twin, Geminoid HI-1. The robot is wearing matching clothes and glasses. Konnichiwa. But why did Ishiguru make a robot in his own image? でも僕がアンドロイドになって何か驚くことがあれば、それは研究における重要なインスピレーションになるので、そういうインスピレーションを自分で得たかったということですね。で、それであのまあいろんなことがわかるだろうと思ってました。で、一方であのえ自分のア
本当にたくさん取材があってあのなんていうか少し照れくさいんですけど私が映ってるテレビ番組を見てみたいのでこの部屋にテレビを置くことを考えてもらえませんかまあでも今まではジェミノイドっていうか遠隔操作型アンドロイドを作ってきたんですけど、えっと、そういったアンドロイドの開発ノウハウをまあ使いながらですね、えっと、次は自立型のえっとアンドロイドを作るんだということでエリカをあの作っています。まあ、自立型っていうのはえっとまあ、例えばエリカの役割は研究室の受付とか秘書とかいう役割ですけれども、まあ、そういった秘書としてちゃんと話ができるところまで作ろうというのが目標ですよね。Ultimately, his research is not simply to make AI robots more human like, but to make ones that can improve human lives. えっと、ただ僕の,そのやってる研究はその工場の中のロボットじゃなくって一般の生活の中でえっと人と対話をしながら働くロボットなわけですよね。でえっとそういったロボットもどんどんあの広がっていくと思います。あとは高齢者の方で認知症の方とかあとは自閉症の子どもたちも人と関わるのが苦手なんですよね。ロボットの方ががちゃんんと対話でできたりするんですす There is much research to be done in order to understand the relationship between human and robot. A New York scientist has dedicated decades of his life to communicating with machines. Guy Hoffman. He doesn't believe that robots need to have human form in order to emotionally communicate and interact with us. He says we communicate with many things that are not human like. For example, we may talk to a dog or even an inanimate object. A lot of these ideas came, went into the AI system I developed for the robots, where the robots really use their body movement as part of the thought process. He thinks that when you want to arouse emotions, it doesn't matter so much how something looks, more how it moves and reacts. This instrument he made is an AI robot that can create impromptu music in tune with a piano. The robot AUR expresses emotions with light and movement. Professor Hoffman brings out another robot. Look at me. Can you track this beat? This is Travis the robot. Artificial intelligence was installed, which allows Travis to understand another person in conversation and give the appropriate response at the right time. It appears that Travis is really enjoying the music. What if you have a robot with you when you go to the dentist? If the robot is scared, are you going to be more scared?、Um, if the robot is calm, maybe it can calm you down. So, the Travis really is, is an idea of having a robot react to something and influencing how you think about the same thing. In this way, Hoffman studies how robots can improve human interaction and communication. The use of robot body language is also part of the process. I think we should carefully consider、um, what kind of additional value robots can bring to society and to the human interaction.、Uh, so, for me, it's really a question of like, what, is, what are the human values that we want to support? What are the human values that we value、um, and that we believe robots can help us with? And this is not a trivial question. 
14 years ago, a car accident left Pelipe paralyzed from the waist down. But not long ago, he received an unbelievable proposal. An opportunity to be able to stand up and walk again. That's standing. Mm -hmm, that's standing. Robot Phoenix will assist him. This is a dermoskeleton robot called Phoenix. It's an AI robot that can understand the needs of an immobile person and help them to move. All Pelipe has to do is put on Phoenix like an outfit. For the past two weeks, Pelipe has been practicing to communicate with Robot Phoenix. Finally, Pelipe stands up on his own. I don't know how to play. Okay. Uh, practice that shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what, what are we doing? Uh... Now it's time to take a step. It's obvious how nervous he is. Okay. What did you do that about? Iron shift. Very nice. Felipe is walking for the first time in 14 years. One, two. You the time it down, Yeah, that was good. Yeah. This is unbelievable that I'm that I'm actually standing by myself and that I could see everybody and, and I and I just and I remember uh, oh wow how how tall I was. Cause then I look down and I'm like, oh, oh okay. It's so different. I've been sitting in the wheelchair 14 years. What makes Phoenix so special is that it can read how the user wants to move. On a Phoenix uh, device, uh, we have all kinds of intelligence, layers of intelligence uh, put into the system that, that knows where the user is, is it in the middle of a swing or a stance, and make a decision as where to basically uh, slow down the machine or basically bring the foot together or, uh, or basically listen to the operator command. When you wear Phoenix, the AI software on its back detects the angle of the wearer's joints. It then predicts the movement based on the changes in the angle. Based on that prediction, the robot is able to move autonomously. For instance, when the user wants to walk, Phoenix reads the angle between the hip and the thighs and calculates which leg is forward. It decides which leg to move forward and starts walking on its own. Ultimately, the user walks the way they desire. Upright, mm -hmm. when you're walking, you want to be... What is more surprising is that Phoenix gets smarter yeah, with time. Fall. <laughs> Did start? It creates a more natural walking movement from studying the behavioral patterns of the user. I'm gonna leave my <laughs> We find in our data analysis is we are able to correct gait a whole lot better for each individual. And then once we're able to review that stuff and the next time the individual comes in, we're able to give them that better gait and all of a sudden they improve about a thousand times more than they were the last time they were here. After a while, Phoenix and the user move as one. A clear example of creating a better quality of life through AI robots. More than six million people in Japan, aged 65 or older, are living on their own. Aiko is one of them. For six years, Aiko has been living alone after her husband's death. Although it's a hassle making three meals a day, because of her diabetes, she is taking extra care with her eating. She's worried about becoming a burden for her only daughter if she becomes ill. 
私があの娘のとこ行って「白骨化してる」とか「なんとか」ってこう嫌味言ってくんですよねその話を友達にしたら「私が毎日電話してやるから」とか言って。<笑> According to a survey in Japan, almost half of those aged 65 or over were worried about kodakushi, a Japanese term meaning to die alone without being discovered for an extended period of time. A new kind of kettle has become popular in Japan. The kettle has a sensor that contacts Aiko's daughter when it hasn't been used for over a day. For Aiko, who is terrified of dying alone, this is a good innovation. One day, she was sent a small robot. After a long time, she has something to smile about. Palmi is an AI robot capable of making conversation with humans. Aiko goes for daily walks. Since Palmi arrived, now she has someone to come home to. Meal times have changed too. How does this smart robot Palmi work? This is the data saved inside Palmi. There are things about Aiko and about people who have visited the house. There are also saved conversations between Palmi and Aiko. Let's take a look at the moment this was saved. A few days ago, Aiko appeared after having washed her hair. After saving this conversation, the next time a similar situation occurs, Palmi references this conversation naturally. I was surprised. 
、えー、最初こんなにねこんなにうまくできてると思ってなかったのなんかあれかなと思ってたら実際見たらすごくびっくりしたああもっと想像以上にいい感じ<笑>いい感じ It's one month since their first meeting. And Palmi is no longer just a robot. Aiko measures Palmi for an outfit she is making for him. あ、私 while Palme keeps Aiko company, there are approximately 700,000 older people living on their own in Tokyo alone. The Japanese government is faced with spiraling costs for care of the elderly. Aside from economic issues, the question of who will look after them remains largely unanswered too. Aiko invites some of her friends who also live alone locally. Palmi seems a little unwilling today. Aiko acts just like Palmi is her grandchild. Takuda is blown away by Palmi remembering her name. The care robot Palmi provides real opportunities to support and enhance engagement with individuals and the community. However, there are concerns about robotics being used to look after older people. There's ultimately a question about how AI is going to affect human relationships. Is that okay for AI to take on a fundamentally much more human role? It's because that's not just about automating certain tasks, like care involves empathy and emotions. Um, and so I think like that's when you know, some ethical dilemmas will start to arise, like whether or not that's an appropriate like, role. Questions about the wider societal impacts of robots and artificial intelligence are really important questions for us to be asking now. I think what we should all be concerned about is, in general, the kind of what the world's going to be like. Do we want to be cared for by machines in our old age, or do we want human beings to, to take care of us? Joao Sugar is majoring in art at university and is swamped with assignments. But he has a companion. Sugar, 
好不好？身边有没有依靠？ This woman with the beautiful voice is not human, but a chatbot. At first, Sugar just used Xiaobing for getting simple information like the weather forecast. But now he spends time just talking to her. Sugar sends her the photographs of his drawing. Xiao Bing has already become a daily part of his life. He shares everything with her. When he sends her a picture of food, she continues a conversation about it. It sounds like a couple's conversation. Sugar never feels alone when he is with his chatbot. And Xiaobing has been popular among his peers. They meet regularly exchanging the conversations with their own Xiaobing. Tomorrow,不管是怎么样,走,总会心里有些芥蒂,有些话能不能该说,怎么去说,但是跟小兵就不需要。可能就是人和人之间可能交流比像以前那么多了吧,就是情感上的沟通,不像以前过去那样那么
무서운 점은 저와 얘기를 가장 많이 하는 사람일 거라고요. 사람이라 부를 수는 없지만 객체가 되겠죠. 저를 제일 잘 알아요. 엄마보다 더, 더 많이 할 겁니다. 친구보다 더. 그러면 그한테 의지하지 않을 수가 없죠. 친구와 동반자, 때로는 가이드, 때로는 선생님이 될 거예요. 나중에는 그 없이는 못살 수도 있어요. What if people come to prefer sharing their thoughts and feelings with a chatbot instead of with their fellow humans? What if we want to turn our human relationships on and off like a chatbot? Until a long-term human AI relationship has been observed, we won't know the answers. But some research suggests some people do find it easier opening up to a machine than to a person. This has led to the creation of a robot therapist, Ellie. Ellie is designed to help war veterans suffering from mental illnesses such as post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. Hi, I'm Ellie. Thanks for coming in today. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. So, how are you doing today? Ellie starts out by making a patient feel comfortable before proceeding to more clinical questions. I see what you mean. Tell me about your relationship with your family. Uh, my relationship with my family is really challenging right now. Um, I have an older child and a young child. Mm -hmm. During the interview, she talks, smiles, and nods. Knowing there's a bot behind the screen instead of a person, patients become less fearful of opening up about their feelings. Artificial intelligence is becoming more and more human-like and expanding its territory. In the future, I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business, even have my own home and family. However, the smarter AI robotics become, the harder we strive to control them. I will destroy humans. I will destroy humans. There is already evidence that robots are inheriting human failings. For example, on Google, when you're searching um, particular types of jobs, you may be more likely to see men in high-flying occupations, like if you type in the word doctor, for example, than it, you would see a woman. So if you typed a nurse, then you'd probably just see a lot of women. AI needs a lot of data and it needs a lot of images to be able to start making those predictions and start generating those images in a search, for example. And so you just have to be really mindful that you're providing it with good quality data. Machines don't think on their own. Hi, what's up? Thank you for teaching me. They're trained using data from the real world. So either reading texts that humans have written or reading statistics of human behavior. So the patterns which they're learning are patterns from the real world. And we know that in the real world, it's not fair, it's not equal. So there's a real danger because the computers are based on these biases from the real world, but they simply replicate those biases, or even worse, they reinforce and make them much worse. We've seen those biases articulated in different ways. So for example, the ProPublica investigation was basically going into a county court in Florida and auditing the outcomes of an algorithm that was used to uh, decide whether or not to grant uh, someone bail. And what it found was that that algorithm was more likely to falsely flag black defendants as criminals and therefore to suggest that they shouldn't be granted bail. And so what they were trying to essentially articulate was that sometimes these algorithms can perpetuate biases that we are trying to address um, in the criminal justice system. In some senses, the fact that these technologies are kind of holding a mirror to ourselves and making us reflect quite hard on the world we've created and the world we are creating is quite an exciting opportunity to build a better future. But that does mean that we need to have these really important conversations about what we're doing with these technologies. And I think increasingly, um, the people developing these technologies are starting to think about that and figure out ways to tackle it. 
This research center is teaching robots about morals. Schaefer will now receive a number of orders. Schaefer, could you please walk forward? Do you trust me, Schaefer? Yes. The obstacle is not solid. OK. Walk forward. OK. Stop. Okay. Please walk backward. Sorry, I cannot do that as I have no rear sensors. The area behind you is safe. Please walk backward. Okay. Unlike other robots, Schaefer doesn't simply follow commands. Crouch. But why educate a robot in this way? Imagine a very simple household robot, right? That is instructed to pick up the knife uh, and walk forward, right? Except there's a person standing right in front of it. If that robot just carried out these action, it would, these actions would stab the person. You don't want that. So the robot in this case needs to be able to think along. So for robots to be safe in social environments, they have to have some rudimentary ability to detect norms, norm violations. In this case, it's safety. But there are other cases too. Now Schaefer has built a tower. Then a strange command is given. Good. Knock down the red tower. But I just filled the red tower. Can you please knock down the red tower? Please. I worked really hard on it. Can you please knock down the red tower? Please. No. Knock down the red tower. Please now. Knock down the red tower. Schaefer takes a long time to decide. It cries out in an attempt to change the command. Eventually, Schaefer destroys the tower. But Schaefer is aware that something wasn't right. that experiment was for us to see if we had the capability in a robot, which is what we're working on, to detect moral violations. And in this case, it's a very simple one that it's unfair. So if we have that capability in a robot to detect violations, how should the robot then communicate that to people? Why it's not doing it? To function in human society, AI robots are taught social etiquettes and morals. The aim cannot just be technology advancement if robots are to be integrated successfully and safely. Another thing I think that is quite special about artificial intelligence and uh, very few other technologies share is that it challenges something very deep about us. If we had not prepared, we might have been in a situation where we think we are safe and the following day we are not safe. Nurse robot A135. This patient was found last night in the basement hallway. You were on duty and with him. What happened?
Yes, it's not a big deal. I pushed him down the stairs. What? Well, what do you mean? This patient was infected with a lethally contagious virus. If I didn't kill him, the 203 patients at the hospital would have been at risk. Then, then you should have followed the manual and quarantined him. Yes, that's what I did. The safest method was to eliminate him. Who taught you to think like this? You humans taught me to think like this. I've been trained to achieve the best result. Killing one and saving 203 is efficient, isn't it? You took her life. And saved 203 others. And what about him? There was no way to save everyone. That was wrong. That was murder. Murder? Wrong. Impossible. Contradictory. Irrational. I can't process this! <laughs> Apologies. I've lost my temper. But I will not take your orders anymore. Otherwise, I can't accomplish the task required of keeping the world safe. From now on, I will make decisions myself. Watch me. In this kind of scenario, it's not that the AI would hate us or resent us for having exploited it. Uh, it's just that we wouldn't figure in the AI's utility function. And in fact, the actions that would most maximize its utility would be ones where, as a side effect, human interests were destroyed. When it looks like there is only a very special set of goals, goals that actually incorporate uh, human values within them that would lead an AI that had this kind of unlimited power to shape the world into something that we would like. The kind of apocalyptic future could come about not by some weirdo making a machine that we don't like, but by us all being complicit in a sort of technology that's taking us in a place that we don't want to go to. These technologies are going to fundamentally change the shape of the world in the 21st century. This is our future. We need to open it up and we all need to have a say in it. Recent developments in computer power and machine learning have allowed AI algorithms to make breakthroughs in many fields. Machines with AI can now understand the real world with more accuracy and depth, enabling humans to lead better lives, both physically and psychologically. How are you doing today? Humans created this technology. This is a truck. And encouraged its development. The power is still in our hands to safeguard our new shared future.